Wednesday, Mar April 29, about 9 a.m., and it's time for another video walkthrough. This may be the penultimate video walkthrough. I can see there being one more after we get all of the house in order. They're in, this way. Yesterday, we had the moving company come in, unload everything. It was a 15-hour day. For them, at least 12 hours for us. We've had the cable come in. They've taken one of the conduits there. You can see the black cable from Comcast They're going over. Later t this morning, the Verizon people will come and they'll be running a FiOS line. So I'll be able to get internet from both providers and then see which one works out better. So, would have been at about an hour or two less, but they sent the wrong trucks the first time. They couldn't get up the driveway, so we had to go. They waited around while the other trucks went back. Here's the tire tracks from where the backed it in. The other one was backed up to the garage. So there's still some painting needs to be done, the landscaping step for the front. Lots of wildlife, not that many fire sirens, police sirens. Last night, just as it was getting dark, two geese circled overhead on the swamp and then settled in. And then over the next half hour, more geese would come flocking by, honking in the air. The geese on the lake would honk back and then they'd settle on in. So I figured that overnight there were a reasonably sized flock. Just like the old story says, you never see one geese at a time. They always travel in pairs or more. Come on, Doran. So, one of the interesting things is that even with all of the furniture, this is still a very large room. You're starting to see how it's going to be filling up with things in it. Fans are still upset up going up. Trisha's dining room table fits in underneath the chandelier. That's probably Trish talking, giving a response to my request. We need to uh, make a temporary mailbox. So we have the concrete in the mailbox post. And I said, well, get me a chainsaw and I can use the chainsaw to mix the cement, and she's not reacting well to that idea. So as you can see, we're starting to put things back in the same places. This is by the front hall, and it already has a couple of credit card receipts from where we bought pizza for things. At the moment, this cabinet has more dog stuff than anything else. The bed's set up, with our night tables on either side. We're clothes and boxes and things. Trish is getting her dresser. Clothes boxes, more clothes boxes. There's actually enough room for me to have a couple chairs in here, so I'm starting to put my clothes on that one. Trish will figure out what she wants to do over in that corner. She may clear it out and do yoga and stuff. closet, we put lots of stuff in the closet, but I moved the electronic stuff, things that we were using to camp out. We had one clothing box. That's the only one that the movers had to help us pack up with, getting the bathroom set up, having the chimney closet in here. Turns out we don't need a dimmer switch on the pendant light. We actually need the dimmer switch on the regular light, so let's see what it looks like. No, nope, that really didn't do much. Let me do another shot sometime in the evening when it's dark. It's not purple, it's pretty reddish. So once again, not walking through the wall. Come on, Darren, get out of the way. 
He's not sure what to make of me talking to myself. Normally very quiet. So, the bookcases are temporarily going to go there until we put wood stove in it. Couch got put back together. Chairs. Furniture things. It's very sunny today. Out on the porch, there's the grill. Kitchen is completely filled with boxes. It's amazing how many boxes get unpacked to fill a kitchen. It's not like books or other things that pack smoothly and fit into the nice corner. So there'll be one box with like two pots in it or a colander and stuff, even though Trish did as much as she could. We're making up a list of uh, things that we need to buy. I have to write chainsaw on there. Looking out the kitchen window. So again, it's it's pretty neat how even though we've got all of the stuff from the other house in here, and this house actually has less square feet, it actually feels bigger because of the high ceilings and the fact that oh, it is very, very bright. You can see this camera having trouble coping. Time to make the dog nervous, number one. The china closet to fill out another view where Trish is putting things in the dining room. So the basement is another thing. I spent most of the time the movers were here down in the basement directing traffic while Trish worked upstairs. And the reason is because I wanted everything in its appropriate place. So over here is the Terran corner. He has all of his boxes and games and things and a couple pieces of furniture that he's interested in. So Terran, time to move out. Time to come and haul this stuff out of the basement. Bed pieces. In the middle here are a bunch of miscellaneous things that I will be taking and stacking on the wall. And now here are Kate and Josh's things. We have the boxes that were shipped over here from England and were never opened. And more boxes that they packed up when they got here with Kate's stuff in it. Things like that. So. Kate, Josh, time to come and get your stuff. Got a nice spring, get a nice U-Haul. Patch panel. This is my version of a patch panel. It looks kind of yucky. I'm talking with the vendors, the contractors about coming in and neatening this thing up. What I've done is we currently have the Comcast cable modem talking to my personal switch, and then my personal switch is now driving a couple ports up there. I'm going to be doing this and so it'll be doing the two computer rooms upstairs and one or two other places around the house. This is all of the boxes that are stuff, seasonal things, holiday ornaments, things like that. Over here is the food section. So we have the freezer and the second refrigerator, all of Trisha's canning stuff, and then I'm going to be setting up another second set of cabinets where Trisha and I are having an argument. I did bring along my planks. She wasn't able to talk me out of them, but we do have a metal rack that we may be able to put everything on. This is the bunk bed, so as soon as we end up having some children spawning out, grandchildren, we will be able to think about putting the bunk bed up and having them set up with it. The final corner over here is where I'm going to be setting things up. A whole bunch of games. Basically all of the games, game related stuff, and comic books are down here. Here's a big table I'll be setting up. More bookshelves and things. That's looking out the back. That's how. This is how sunny this is. For a basement this is not dim at all and again 
those high ceilings are making a big difference. So now we're looking down the length of it, and you can see how far away all of Josh and Kate's stuff is at the other end. Secretary that we'll see about refinishing. Thing, those tall, thin boxes here are all of the screens for the windows, so when the weather gets a bit warmer, I'll be starting to open those up, and if Trish lets me, I'll be putting them up, otherwise she'll be putting them up. So we'll go back upstairs, say hi briefly to Durin, and then make him totally freaked out. Durin has been in the basement. He doesn't come down these stairs, but he'll come in the entrance and then join me through the downstairs entrance, and he is willing to run up the stairs. Take a view out the picture window again, the great room, starting to see how this will be shaping up. View of the ceiling, the chandelier here. So this is the guest bedroom, once again for guests, not for children or grandchildren who want to move back in with us. They get the basement. Bookshelves, dressers, lots more bookshelves. We don't have a bed in here yet. We will be putting one in when we get a new stand and shuffling things around. This is the where all of the children's books are going to end up going. Hint, hint, hint. Right now the bathroom upstairs has all of the electronic equipment that I moved by hand and the other in my painting, things like that. So I'll be helping there, seeing about emptying this out. Trisha's office. You can see how her desk is going to be going in there. A couple bookcases by the corner. Look out the window. Another bookcase, a short one. Sewing things in. It's amazing how she has a whole lot of boxes, too. And one of the amazing things that she's been very <clears throat> grumpy about is to say, no, none of my boxes or books or anything other than her stuff is coming in here. And then she has another book. Oh, so that's where the bookshelf is. So she was able to fit a bookshelf and her filing cabinet in here. So instead of having to run up and down the basement to file stuff, Looking out her window. Cutting through the glass door and now going into my office. So you can see all of the boxes in the middle with things that will be going on the bookshelves. And bookshelves. Bookshelf 1, bookshelf 2, bookshelf 3, bookshelf 4, bookshelf 5, 6, 7, and bookshelf 8. Yay! And if I decide I don't want them all in here, then I'll be able to drag them downstairs and set them up there. So, and then hiding behind here, I brought my computer in last night, is the day bed. And as we used before, this will probably not have the mattress on it. It will instead probably have the dog bed in case, so that when I'm up here and the dog's finally willing to come up, he'll be willing to look out the window and bark at all of the cars and we had the middle school track team, about 50 middle schoolers all running up the hill yesterday, and he freaked out because uh, he needed to herd them into a circle. So that concludes this video walkthrough. I expect at least one more when uh, everything is mostly put back into place again. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.